All right, hey everyone, we're working through T3 case problem one, slate and pencil tutoring. So I'm gonna just go back to the home page here and pop this open in a new tab, just so I can have this open and it allows me to minimize this, gives me some more room to work. So I have SP home and SP layout opened here. And this is what it's going to look like when we're done. Or if you go back to Blackboard, you can find my screenshot of what it's going to look like. And the style sheets and graphic files have been created for you. Your job is to write the HTML markup. I think those instructions are wrong. Let me read the book here. Karen has supplied you with the HTML file and graphic files. She's given you a base style sheet to initiate your web design and a style sheet containing several uh, typographic styles. Your job will be to write up the layout style sheet Okay, so on the home page, actually we have no style sheets linked, so I'm guessing we're gonna start or very quickly get into that, um, loading up base styles, and then we're probably gonna be building out the layout. Yeah, cause that one's empty. All right, let's quit guessing. We know how to do that. Let's get going. Enter your name and date in SP Home. February 12th. And then in SP Home, we need to add some style sheets. So link rel equals style sheet href equals SP. And I'm just going to do SP underscore dot CSS. And I'll show you why. Because now I can take this line, copy it, paste, paste. And now I can do SP base, SP styles, and SP layout.css. All right, so I did that. It's checking it. While it's checking it, I'm going to come back here and refresh. So now we have some colors added to it. All right, that would be the styles. SP base is just resetting everything. So getting rid of basically all of the um, browser styles. And SP layout, that's what we're going to be building upon. So we did that. In SP layouts in the window and body section, we're going to create a rule for the HTML element that sets the height of the browser window at 100%. That's it. That's my call in the right spot. And then for the body, that's the width browser window sets the width to 95%. All right, so we're going to do width 95%, ranging from 640 up to 760 pixels. So the minimum width is going to be 640 pixels. And if we have min width, we also have max width, which is going to be 960 pixels. So as we're resizing our window, it will be 95% of our HTML or of the window is going to be the body. It at least has to be 640 pixels and it can't be any wider than 960. All right, if I come back and refresh, um, it looks like this right now, horizontally center the body. So remember to center um, an element like this, we set the margin left to auto and the margin right to auto. And in doing so, we're saying, hey, you go, hang on, I just hit save. Okay. You go figure out what the margin should be and make them the same. So that's how we centered the body within the HTML. Um, and finally, Karen wants to ensure the height of the body is at least as high as the browser window, which isn't an issue for us right now because these images are gigantic. Um, but to do so, we are going to set the minimum height of the body to 100%. All right, not gonna be able to see that right now, um, but that is done. All right, and then we need to set a rule to apply the border box model. And if we remember, we go look at what the border box model is. It, it depends if you include the, um, you know, the, the padding, border, and margin 
in your calculations or not. All right. So if you said that this, this content width is 300 and the box model is content box, this bit here is going to be 300 versus when the box models border box, the margin border and padding and content added together is going to be 300. All right. And what we need to do, what we're being asked to do for header, ul, nav, li, and a elements, we are going to set the box sizing to border box. So we're going to include everything um, in our calculations. And I don't think we'll really see a big difference here. We haven't really done anything with sizing yet. Um, but body styles should be done. I'm going to check this because I'm curious on something. Let's see if this works. Okay, great work. All right, let's go on to row and page header styles, um, which is row and page header styles here. Go to the row section. Karen's placed all elements that should be treated as a grid rows in the row class. So if we do go back to SP home, we could see class equals row, UL class equals row, class equals row. All right, and we're thinking about grids here for ele every element of the row class, dot row, every element of the row class, create a style rule that expands the element to cover any floating content. Hint, use the technique shown in the tutorial that employs the after pseudo element. So after the row, we're going to clear both. We need to add some content just to, um, and our content could be nothing. Um, just so that we can make sure there, there's no, um, oh, what do you call it when your when your row collapses, right? We want to make sure that we can expand that row out. So, and we're going to display that stuff as a table, and and not a real big change. All right, so we're good there. And then in the headers section. You'll create style for the content of the body header. Create a style rule for the logo image within the body header. Okay, I don't know what they're talking about. So here's the logo image. So it's an image in the header of the body. So I'm going to do body header image. Um, now, trick here, this is that image, right? Um, we can inspect this. And remember this trick with, within the elements tab down here. So I right clicked on this, I chose inspect, I find it in my document object model, the DOM down here. Okay, that might be a new term for you. But that's what the what the browser is using to render this page. I'm going to right click on that element. And I'm going to choose copy selector. All right, so one more time from the beginning, I found my the element. I'm like, gee, I wonder what the CSS is to access this image. So I'm going to inspect the image. That's going to highlight it in the DOM down here. I'm going to right click on the element. I'm going to choose copy selector. And now I'm going to come back to my my CSS. And I'm going to hit paste. And it cut it when I copied the selector. Chrome said, hey, if you want to get to this element, it's body, arrow, header, arrow, image. All right. So that was a pretty easy one. We could have, you know, we did figure that out and wrote it out. But there's other things like, let's say you wanted sociology. All right. Which is part of an LI within all this stuff. I don't know what this is. Right click, copy, selector. And now I can come back and body nav ul li nth child 6a all right so when you have stuff that's a little bit more complicated it's a great little trick to get your selectors for the logo image displays the image as a block element so display block uh, with a width of 70 percent of the header on the left margin. So we're, we just finished this paragraph right here. 
is this little bit of code right here. If I come back, refresh. Okay, now this image is bigger, right? Expanded out to 70%. This is 30%. And because it floated to the left, it gave us room for our navigation to appear over here. All right. I guess maybe if I highlight the things I'm working on, it might help me. I just keep getting lost. The header also contains a navigation list that Karen wants to display vertically. So that's this navigation list, not to be confused with the horizontal navigation list. All right, so this navigation list right here. Oh, and whenever I click off of that, that goes away. All right, anyway. Create a style rule for the nav element within the body header. So within the body header, there's a nav. Oh, and this should be down here. Um, nope, sorry. Still is up here. This is the in the body. We're still in the page header. Okay. Um, floats the navigation item to the left. Sets the size of the left and right padding to 2%. So padding left is 2%. And copy that. Paste. Padding right 2%. And then sets the width of the navigation list to 30% of the header. So width is 30%. And then the hypertext links in the navigation to be, should be displayed as blocks. So the links within the navigation, that's like really similar to this, right? So I'm going to take that, copy it, and paste. And you know, what they're saying is, the links within the navigation. So to me, that's like this. Body, header, nav, those, that body, arrow, nav, arrow, sorry. Body, arrow, header, arrow, nav. And they're asking for the links within the nav. But just from last, um, the last assignment, I'm guessing they really want this. All right, so we're gonna narrow it down very specifically. So we're looking for the A tag within a LI, within the UL, within the nav, within the header, within the body. All right, two different ways to read it. You can read it uh, right to left or left to right. And for these things, they should be um, displayed as a block and a width of 100%. So right now, look at these these navigation items. Okay, they're like if I look to like just over here to the right of the word pricing, I can't click on that. There's nothing there. This is pricing, but because I displayed it as a block with the width of 100%, when I refresh this, now this entire thing all the way over here, this is part of that link. Okay, and then we have two percent on either side. So I believe that that bit is done. And while that's checking, we're going to move up to the horizontal. Excellent, we did it. Oh, here we go. Horizontal list um, styles. Karen's added a second navigation list that she wants to display horizontally. All right, so that's this one. Instead of vertically, we want it to do, be displayed horizontally. And we did this on the Chocolatier site. Let's see if we're going to do it the same way. For all items within the horizontal, horizontal navigation list. Well, if we look at this, we have nav class horizontal. I'm going to copy this because I'm efficient, not because I'm lazy. I'm going to paste it here. And instead of that class equals horizontal, that's how you do it in, C in HTML. In CSS, we do it like this, right? Nav dot horizontal. That means the navigation element with a horizontal class. Create a style that displays, hang on, for all list items within this. Oh, so we got UL, LI. So not, not the nav item, but all list items within that horizontal nav. Create a style that displays the items as blocks with a width of 12.5% and floated on the left. So 
that means that this math is going to be over here and then science is going to come right next to it. And all of this should be, if I look, this should all be within a row. So when it's all done, it will um, stop container collapse and everything because we wrote that rule. Um, we wrote that rule up here. All right. So I'm going to come back, refresh. And here are my elements. I'm going to inspect these because I want to just look at them as I'm mousing over them. Okay. Um, so every LI is the same width. They're all that 12.5%. And why 12.5%? Because we have eight of them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and 100 divided by eight, bring up the calculator here, 100 divided by eight is 12 and a half. So if I only had six nav items, I would make it 16.67%, maybe 16.66. All right. So 100 divided by how many items you have will give you the width of those items. All right, so that was horizontal navigation styles. Um, I'm going to check this while I read on for HR styles. Uh, go to the HR section. Funny that topics is here, but oh look, we passed. Okay. Um, for the HR, HR element, yep, this uh, style is sets the width to 50%. All right, I'm never going to test that one because it is just so basic. All right. And then footer styles. And we're all over the place here. Go to the footer style section, create a rule that displays the footer only when both margins are clear of any floating objects. So for footer, clear both. Let's if I move on, will it test those? Oh no, I actually have to test them. All right. Okay, click them. I'm um, clicking both. Great. Let's go back, refresh. Um, yeah, nothing real exciting at that point. Oh, the HR. Let's see. Oh, there it is. There's our HR is 50% now. Okay. Um, it's funny because that footer section, like we're not even going to see that until later work is done, but it's done, it's completed. Let's move on, going back up to topics section. This is where it gets a little intense. This section uh, sets the style for a list of four topics describing what the company is offering. These are the topics, these giant images. Okay, is what the, and if we look at the page, this is what it's gonna look like, all right? Um, this is what they're offering. Karen wants it to be displayed horizontally for list items within the UL. All right, let's do this. Let's take a look at where those topics are. Here they are. And we have a UL with an ID of topics. So I'm probably going to be using that. I'm probably going to be using UL topics. All right, for list items within the UL element with the ID topics. Oh, yeah, we are. And for list items within it. So list items within it. Display the items as block. Float the items on the left margin. Set the size of the left margin space to 0%. And again, that could be just 0, because um, 0% and 0 pixels are both 0. And then on the right-hand side, one and a half percent. Okay, and that does need a percentage because if I just had one and a half, you wouldn't know if I was talking pixels, inches, or percentage. Okay, Karen wants, so let's look at what this looks like now. Didn't do a whole lot. Maybe because these images are so still so huge. All right, we'll probably get there in a second. Let's see. Karen wants the topics to be well away from the left and right edges of the body. In the same section, create a rule that sets the size of the left margin of the first item in the topics list to 7.75%. So let's use this trick. 
All right, I'm going to just inspect this. Now this gave me the image. What I want is the LI. Okay, this is the first item in the list. I'm gonna copy the selector. I'm gonna come back to my code. I'm gonna paste. I'm not saying this is necessarily right, but let's see what it gives us. So it gave us nth child one, which, you know, works. I don't know, let's see, we'll see if it validates. I'm gonna be I'm gonna say it probably won't. Um we want margin left on this nth child to be 7.75%. And it's important that this is under um, all of the LIs. Because what we do is we say all the LIs have a margin left of zero, except for the first one, which is set to 7.75%. All right, and similarly, I want the last one, which could be nth child four, all right? But the better selector for the last one um, would be last child. All right, and in this case, the margin right is 7.75%. So again, I don't think this is going to validate. Uh, we'll see in a moment when I click the button. And then in the same section, I need to display the image within each list item in the topics list. Okay, so UL topics, um, LI, IMG with Autocomplete really slowing me down. With 50%. And centered within the list block. Hint, set the left and right margins to auto. Okay, so um, I missed right here. We need to display this as a block. So let's not forget that. And then I know we have left and right auto somewhere, right? We did it up here. Copy that. You can write it out again if you want, but did that. Okay, now let's see. All right, we're definitely missing something here because these things should not be that big. I feel like I'm missing that these LIs should have a width of 25%. Oh, width of 20%. I'm sure you're yelling at me that I missed that. Um, okay. Now, uh, let's see. There we go. So that looks good. And again, I just think that this nth child one is probably going to have to say first child, but I'm curious. I want to see if they accept this as an answer. Oh, cool. It passed. Okay. So I'm going to leave it like that. Um, Nothing wrong with it. I would probably, if this were my code, I would make this say first child, okay? because that's always like the first child. Um, it's a little bit easier to understand, especially because, you know, nth child one in computer science, when you're counting things, a lot of times you start counting at zero. So with nth child one, what I'm thinking is that's the second thing, all right? So if I said here, first child, there is no question in my mind we're talking about the first one. But either one worked. All right, let's go to the customer comment section. So now we're talking about this mess down here. Um, and if you remember, it needs to look like this. Okay, the customer comment. Maybe I can do this without skipping steps this time. We'll see. In this section, you'll create rules the customer comments for the UL element with the ID comments. So the UL element with ID, ID means use the pound sign, comments. Create a style rule that sets the width to 75% and centers the element by setting the top bottom margin to 40 pixels and the left right to auto. All right, a couple ways to do this. I'm gonna use the shortcut margin um, um, property here. So remember, it's like a clock. So it's 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, like a, you know, a round clock, an analog clock. 12 o'clock is the top position. So I want that to be 40 pixels. And then I want the 
left and right to be auto. So my three o'clock position is auto. My six o'clock is 40 pixels and my nine o'clock is auto. All right. So it's top, right, bottom, left, or 12 o'clock, three o'clock, six o'clock, nine o'clock. And when this repeats, when the top and bottom and the left and right are the same, you could just do it like this. All right. Just margin 40 auto. So it'll be top, right, bottom, left. That was this. Karen wants to list items. All right. I'm, I'm going to stop right there because I know if we're talking about the list items, I'm going to need this, right? Um, to appear in two columns in the same section, create a rule for every list item in the comments that displays it as a block with a width of 50% loaded on the left and sets the size of the bottom margin to 30 pixels. So let's take a look at what that did. Now it looks like this. And just for the fun of it, let's take away this 30 pixel margin. All right, it's just see how like Kevin 12th grade Utah is really referring to this guy up here, but because it's so close to this image, it looks like it's referring to this one. So that bottom margin just gives us a little bit of space. All right, that looks good. And then every customer comment is accompanied by an image of the student. Let's go and look at the HTML here. So, right, every UL with an ID of comments, every LI has an image with of, of the student. Oh, see, this is kind of interesting that they're using like, they're not even using quote tags or block quotes. They're not citing any of this stuff. Oh, that's bad HTML. All right, anyway, we're not here to fix their HTML. Um, Karen wants these images to be displayed at the left of the comment. Oh, because right now they're on the right of the comment. Okay, so it's very similar to this start, you know, um, starting selector. So I'm gonna copy that bit. But instead of just the LI, we want the image. All right, so UL comments LI image. Um, we want to float these to the left. Oh, uh, display each image in the comment list item as a block. Let's not forget that. It's really screwing me up that I can type way faster than MindTap can respond. Um, with a width of 20%, float it to the left and a left right margin of 5%. And because they're not telling me what the top bottom is, I actually have to write out margin. There are ways to use the shortcut. Um, almost done. Create a style rule for every paragraph nested within a customer list item. So again, really similar to this, but instead of every image, for every paragraph, for these paragraphs, um, float the paragraph on the left margin with a width of 70%. So I'm back here, refresh this now. And now it looks like this, which looks just like this. Let's test this section here. All right, we're good to go. Next page. Um, open it, make sure it looks right, which it does. Now, what's funny is they're telling you to, you know, use the W3C HTML validator. Um, but we worked with CSS here. So there's a jigsaw validator, jigsaw CSS validator, um, which will allow us to validate our CSS. Okay. I'm going to do direct input. So I'm just going to copy paste. So I'm going to take all my CSS here copy it, come back to the validator, paste, and check. Congratulations, no errors found. So Jigsaw CSS validator, you can use to validate your CSS. All right, I'm gonna run this through the final test, even though I know it's right. 
Great work. Now you can submit Slate and Pencil Tutoring.